Greetings, welcome to Growth Hacking Show. This show is for founders, CEOs, consultants, entrepreneurs who want to avoid costly mistakes and accelerate their business growth for their own future. So please, you are going to meet a different guest altogether today. It's not about really growing your business, it's about something else which is again very correlated to grow for your own business growth. So it's not a growth, it's however it's something else. So in case you don't know me, my name is Mohammed Sadiq. I am the host of Growth Hacking Show and the co-author of New Success Secrets from Atlanta, Georgia. With me, my guest today is Nils Vesk. He is the innovative innovation architect and the founder of Ideas with Legs and he is helping companies to innovate because if you are just another thing and everybody else offer the same thing, that means you are not innovating. If you are not innovating, you are not different. And until you are different, you have no position in the marketplace. Is that right? Hopefully my guest agrees with that too. Please join me to give a warm welcome to learn from the innovation architect, Nils Vesk from Sydney, Australia. Nils, welcome. Hi, Mohammed. Thank you for having us. It's my pleasure. Nils, let me start with this. Where were you? What happened? Who you were surrounded with that inspired you to become an innovation architect? Oh, it's a great question. Um, if we went all the way back into the 1990s, I used to be an urban designer. So we would design things like new cities, new towns, big infrastructure projects and the sort. And I probably needed a bit of a break. And I was uh, quite into well-being. I'd written a well-being book. I had a co-host on a, a well-being show in Australia. And I met an awesome professional speaker who became a mentor for me for public speaking. And one day he said, Nils, how do you come up with all of your ideas? And I said, well, that's what I used to get paid to do. I used to sit down, come up with 15 ideas, whittle it down to five, down to three, down to one. Uh, we'd create a, a document, the idea, and then they'd go out and build it for a hundred million dollars. And so he said, well, how can you, can you help me mentor, uh, mentor him and his company to do the same with generating ideas and executing them. So I did that for about six months and he said, wow, this rocks. And then what he did was he hooked me up with four CEOs around Sydney, which is where we are down here in Australia. And one of them said, wow, you're coming up with ideas we could never think of before. Um, how about you come and consult for us one or two days a week? And that's when the penny dropped. And um, back then, which is, we're talking like 18 years ago, uh, the term design thinking did not exist. And that's what I was doing. So that's where it all kind of started. Wonderful. That's amazing. So you are the man of unique ideas, basically. So, <laughs> so when it comes to designing it, innovating and designing, what are the top three missteps to avoid? Mm, I, think, I think not just in terms of designing, but in, in terms of businesses or if you've got an innovation, the first one would be around the amount of time it makes to, to, to make a decision. Um, I must admit, I've spent way too long in the past where I would, should I, shouldn't I? And I would go with my gut sometimes and other times with my head. And that's probably the biggest mistake that we make. So I think to get over that, you've got to get out of your head. One of the things that we use now is we use a decision chip accelerator. And what this does is enables us to get, um, get your idea onto paper and look at your best options so that you can make a decision without all the anxiety. So that's probably the first one. I think the second biggest mistake um, is around not having simple processes. So one of the things that we kind of have worked a lot with our clients and with ourselves is to make sure that we have step-by-step -step flow charts that enable people to, you know, do a technique or a process. So we have, you know, like 50 or 60 of these for our clients, but we also have them in our own organization. We, well, I think that was something that, you know, things were too complex. And I think the third thing uh, probably would be about thinking that you can solve everything. And so what, you know, it took me a while to realize I'm not a genius, um, write down what's the problem, turn it into a question and then go to my network and say, hey, I'm really struggling with this. Does anyone have any ideas? Wonderful. That's amazing. 
what's the problem turn into a question and go to your network to ask ask for help mm. instead of trying to do everything yourself that's a very valuable lesson thank you so much nils so based on your experience of 18 or 20 years uh, almost uh, working on this as a, in, a innovation architect and as a consultant on ideas with legs what are the top three success secrets that help you to grow your business yeah now this this sort of comes down to three different areas actually there's four phases but three the first one is around insights the second is around ideas and the third is around prototyping now we all hear the word insight but this is where we not only uh, improved our business amazingly, but this is what we do for our customers. And um, so the big thing is that we often think, oh, we know what our customer needs, but every business on the planet knows that there are needs out there. But what we also need to be mindful of is that um, we need to think about what are their desires? What are their frustrations? What are their bottlenecks? And if we can really get clear about them and identify some one of those frustrations that up until now no one's capitalized on before that's when we can create a great commercial idea so insights is really important part the second part then is around ideas and you might think well um, the biggest challenge we often have in business is trying to differentiate ourselves from a customer and so having a bank of idea generation techniques that you can use to uh, create more value and stand out from the crowd, um, be more curious to create more, um, I guess, be more compelling for your customer. That's one of the ways you can create great growth because, you know, beige is not something that people want to pay for, but if it's sparkly and it's silver, they're going to, it's going to grab their attention. And the third would come down to the concept of prototyping and, the, the thinking about this is if you've got an idea for business and rather than going out there and say, right, we're going to spend 10 million or a hundred million dollars doing this is start off with the smallest component first. So what you might do is say, well, let's actually go out there and create a plan for an experiment. Let's say we're going to create a new widget. Okay. This is the plan. We're going to build a teensy little version of it. We're going to test it for one week and we're going to see how it goes. So we plan it. We make our predictions as to what we think is going to happen. We think that uh, people are going to say it's difficult or it's easy or it's going to save this amount of time. Then we come back and we look at what, when we run the experiment, we measure as much as we can. And then we come back and we evaluate what did we predict and what actually happened. And when we can compare those two, we learn a lot. So the motto is spend a little, learn a lot. It's not about, you know, when we work with clients, like let's say, for example, an IBM, when they worked with, it's one of our clients, when they went to invent the world's fastest supercomputer, they didn't just go and build it. They said, what's the smallest component that we can work on? Oh, let's look at the processing speed. Could we double it? Oh, we quadrupled it. So they learned and then they went back. And that's one of the things that I think is really important in business is that innovation is really just experimentation. But don't go big. Don't, don't uh, you know, invest everything spend a little learn a lot i love it spend a little and learn a lot mm, yeah. yeah so insights ideas and prototypes that's a very structured way of actually you know testing your ideas and making it when it's working then you work on improvement mm. so nils you have been in business for long enough now and i can i can probably ask you this question and hopefully you're going to answer me you know running a business is a roller coaster sometimes it's going up and sometimes it's going down is it right uh well not not for our business but um i think i think for lots of businesses it can be that way okay in general um, it's a in general statement so when is a down moment you know whenever you feel down what keeps you going at the time Oh, I like that question. Um, I mean, what, what really gets me going is having a purpose. So I have a genuine belief that I was bought or brought onto this planet to help people come up with brilliant ideas and then take them out there into the world. So for sometimes it's for companies that want to make lots and lots of money and I work with them because they help to pay obviously our bills and all my mortgages. But, um, but also just for, for people who might have an idea about, you know, how can we, you know, reduce the, the amount of malaria in an area. Um, and, and yeah, so having, I think having a core vision, like why am I here? 
what's that real purpose other than just making money. I think, I think that that always helps me to get excited because, you know, there are times when, you know, you might have a, a calendar where it's, it's really full and you think, do I really want to do this? And just checking in to say, what's your value? Why am I here? What, what are my skills? What's my unique talent? That, that's sort of, I think, what helps me get through those moments. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. So how the Growth Hacking Show community, people who are watching this right now can support you? Yeah, well, I think um, I, 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 we're pretty happy with how our business is going. But one thing I would really love to help your community with is, um, you know, if you've got a great idea and you've got a game changing idea, why don't you go out there and do something with it? And what I'd love you to do if you get the chance is go over to check out our website, um, ideaswithlegs.com. And um, what we've got on there is a, um, a process flowchart that takes you through step by step how to take an idea from a concept all the way through the beginning and um, I think it will probably get you to start thinking about the, all of those different phases of ideas you know the insights the ideas and the prototypes and also it will help to communicate the concept of having a good flow chart and having your processes nice and simple so if I can help you go out there and create a game-changing idea then it's going to make me look good and that would make me very happy wonderful wonderful anyone I'm sure they're, they're excited thank you so much for sharing that <laughs> mapped out process of taking something from out of from this place to putting it on a paper in a structured way so they can get make something out of it and plus that will make them a good night's sleep too because once you have the idea, you cannot take it out. Guess what is keep bothering you and we never really get out yeah. of make anything work. Exactly. Yeah. Nils, as we are about to wrap up, what would you say as a final word? You know, uh, Mohammed, what comes to my mind is that everyone is capable of creating a game-changing idea. But the only thing that usually gets in the way really, if it really comes down, it's not money, it's not logistics, it's ourselves. So if we've got to kind of start with changing our thinking, but if we can change our thinking, you know, who knows, we could change an industry or even change the world. Change your thinking, change your industry and change, <clears throat> change the world. And it's all, Nils is saying this all about this two inch real estate, everything is here. So you might better change your thoughts on this one. Thank you so much, Nils Vesk for sharing your wisdom with us today on the behalf of Growth Hacking Show community and our entire team, we really appreciate you. This is Mohammed Sadiq signing off from Atlanta, Georgia, wishing you good luck, good sales. I do hope our path cross again with an amazing guest. Until then, all best wishes. Goodbye.